Boing. Let's take a look at substitutions. Please note that this tutorial was created on an iPad Pro using Animation Pro version 1. Your screens may look a little different. Animation Pro was designed for the creation of 2D animations. So whilst it's easy to rotate figures around their z-axes, think of the z-axes as an imaginary line coming out of the iPad screen. To make a figure turn around a different axis, you actually need to draw different versions of the figure and substitute them in. So substitution plays a big role when it comes to producing effective animations. Now you may ask, what's the big deal? Swapping figures isn't difficult. What's the big deal? Swapping figures isn't difficult. Well let's take a quick look at that. Here I have a short animation of a robot moving across the screen. To make it look better, I've added a reflection, a shadow, and some highlighting to the robot. In the last frame, I'd like the robot to turn and face the camera. So I'll remove the current side-on figure and load a new front-facing version of the figure. Immediately, this has caused a number of issues. Firstly, the shadow and reflection were clones of the side-on figure and thus linked to it. So whilst I could choose to retain the clones, they're no longer linked to anything. So when I move the front-facing figure, they will no longer automatically update. You may also have noticed that the new figure isn't the same size. Nor does it have any of the existing highlighting. But perhaps more importantly, if I go on to render this animation, you'll also see that the side-on figure disappears momentarily before the front-facing figure appears. I'll slow down the playback so that it's more apparent. This occurs because the side-on figure was effectively removed at frame 2. So there's nothing for Animation Pro to tween between frame 2 and frame 3 where the front-facing figure appears. In other words, simply swapping figures is not a terribly good idea. Whilst you can make it work with some effort, there is a simpler way. Animation Pro allows you to create multiple versions of any given figure. These are known as figure substitutes. To create a figure substitute, simply open an existing figure in the Animation Pro Figure Editor. When prompted to create a substitute, select Yes. Now, if you've already watched the tutorial on figure creation, then you'll notice that some of the controls are missing. That's because substitutions need to retain the basic structure of the original figure. So you can't add additional items to the figure, remove existing items from the figure, or change the flexible, static, bendable, or stretchable properties of any of the items within the figure. Everything else, however, is fair game. So let's give this figure a little bit of a distressed look. I'll now move his right arm a little bit to the back, and his hand. I'll now change his head, give him a matching mouth, and fix up his eyes a little bit. So now I've got a beaten up version of the robot rotated slightly to its right. I'm happy with that, so I'll save it. Animation Pro will now ask if I want to create yet another substitute. But I'm going to stop here now and return back to the animation screen. Let's now take another look at the animation I started with earlier in this tutorial. This time, instead of removing and replacing the figure in the final frame, I'll select the figure, open the Add menu, and choose Figure Substitute instead. Animation Pro will show you all of the figures already in your project that are considered to be compatible substitutes. Alternatively, you can look in the other categories for compatible substitutes. Now, we just saved the robot substitute, so it should appear under the User Figures category. There it is. As you can see, Animation Pro has replaced the figure in the frame. Not only that, the substituted figure has retained many of the attributes of the original figure, such as its size and its highlighting. 
You'll also notice that the shadow and reflection are still tied to the figure and now reflect its new shape and appearance. So in general, that's much better. But there are a couple of caveats that you should be aware of. Firstly, the items within the figure will not retain any changes to their geometry across the substitution. So if you've moved, rotated or resized any items, you may have to do it all over again in the substitute. And if you're wondering why... Why? Well, it's because the geometry of the figure's items would most likely have been modified whilst creating the substitute. So updating the geometry of a substitute from the figure it's replacing would really mess things up. Secondly, whilst Animation Pro will produce tweens for a figure across a substitution, they won't be animated. So if we take a look at the rendered version of this example animation, we'll see that the tweens for frame 2 look exactly the same as frame 2. So the figure appears to pause briefly before it changes. Now you might ask why. Eh? Well, in most cases, a figure substitute will represent a figure in a completely different orientation. Take a look at this simple animation consisting of two frames. In the first frame, the girl is standing still, facing forwards. In the second frame, I've substituted in a different version of the girl facing to the side in a running position. Now if Animation Pro attempted to produce tweens for those two figures, it would get it horribly wrong so it doesn't try to do it at all. This of course means that there will be a little additional work required by you, the professional animator, to make the substitution flow. And that will involve creating user tweens to manually adjust the figure across the substitution. Let's take a quick look. In my example animation, I'll start by selecting frame 2. To create user tweens, I'll press the plus button at the top of the screen and select user tweens to frame 2. Animation Pro will prompt me to set the number of tweens. In this case, I'm happy with 2. As you can see, the robot figure in each of the tweens doesn't change or move. So I'll quickly fix things up so the animation flows a little better. If I now play the rendered animation in slow motion, the figure now continues to move until it changes. Of course, the results aren't that great because the figure suddenly appears to be beaten up. But hey, this is just a tutorial. Sometimes, it can be easier to substitute one or more items in a figure rather than substituting the entire figure. To do that, Start by tapping on a figure to select it. Tap on the handle of the item that you'd like to change, and then select Substitute. Animation Pro will attempt to display all of the previous substitutes applied to the selected item. In this case, there aren't any. So I'll select User Images, as I know I have some suitable images in there. This one will do. And the substitution has now been made. If I go to substitute the same item again, you'll see that Animation Pro now displays the last substitution for the given item, which makes selection a lot easier the next time around. Now there are times that you may want to do a substitution on an item that doesn't have a handle. The robot's mouth, for example, is static, so it doesn't have one. Simply press the handle button at the bottom corner of the screen to reveal all of the handles in the selected figure. Now I can select the mouth and perform the substitution. And if you'd like to quickly return a substituted item back to its original state, then simply select the item and choose original. Whenever a substitution has exactly the same dimensions as the original item, it can be swapped in without the need for any further adjustments. In many cases, however, I expect that you may have to perform a few adjustments following the substitution. In this case, the bow tie has been enlarged to fit the bounds of the necktie, so I'll need to fix that up. To do that, I'll tap twice on the tie's handle. The first tap brings up the bend handles, the second the item popover. 
Now I'll select Adjust. Using two fingers, I'll resize the tie, and then using one finger, I'll move it into the correct position. Finally, I'll tap on the green tick button at the top left of the screen to accept the changes. All done. I hope you found that as informative as I did. Thanks for watching.